Hello, everybody. Welcome to the GSEF 2020 Virtual Global Forum. The power of community and SSE is a path for transformation. Great challenges, greater solidarity. A hundred countries online, 35 sessions, three languages, the most important forum of social economy this year. Today, we are in our second plenary session with the title Civil and Public Initiatives to Consolidate Social and Solidarity Economy, Convergence Among Actors and Sectors. As you know, we have experts, authorities, members of the academia, the youth and representatives of all sectors of social and solidarity economy are here together in this virtual platform to talk about inclusive and sustainable local social development, finding different paths for transformation. We will jump right into our session. As I have said, we have three different languages, which is why we have simultaneous interpretation available. Before we begin, we will share information on the screen about how to enable the function of language interpretation. The next plenary will be in all three languages, Spanish, English, and French. We have a wonderful team of interpreters with us. They're all women. And that's why right now you should be able to find on your screen different ways to access interpretation, whether you're on your phone, as you can see it there, or a PC, and regardless of the operating system you use. If you're on your PC, on the lower part, on the bottom of the Zoom screen, you should be able to find an icon that looks like a globe. On your phone, look for the menu of interpretation with the three dots, and there you can choose the channel you prefer. If you want to change, you may do that at any moment, but we do recommend that you choose the language you feel more comfortable listening to. In the end, we will have questions, and we are going to ask you to share your thoughts, your opinions, because at the end of the day, this is a discussion, and we want everybody to participate as much as we can. We cannot hear everyone, but we have a chat box and a solid team of rapporteurs and people gathering all the information, regardless of whether you participate with your mic or through the chat. A question that we will be asking is how we can transform our present to build a better future with social and solidarity economy. So I want to put that out there to all of you. We'll be waiting to see your comments and questions on the chat box. As I said, you can also follow us in our social media on Facebook Live. And here, a team will be monitoring every single one of the comments you share on the chat box. So all your thoughts, ideas, comments, and questions, we will be paying close attention to. So you might be asking yourselves, where can you follow the live stream or where can you follow everything that's happening on our social media? If you want to share anything on your social media, which is also important because all of us in this session are true believers in social and solidarity economy, but we want to take that passion and communicate it to others. We want to share our ideas to people who don't really know what social and solidarity economy is. So it's all about sharing. It's all about spreading the word to make sure there is much more visibility and not only visibility, but to guarantee that together locally, we find practices with the pillars of our values. So you can follow us live if you follow the links on Facebook in any of the three languages. All you have to do is access our website, gsev2021.org. And you can also share content using our hashtag. We'll be tracking that. Hashtag gsev2021 on all social media outlets. And finally, we are here in the GSEF Global Virtual Forum. We have brought together 
important stakeholders of social and solidarity economy from around the world, over a hundred countries, as we said, to share successful experiences, innovative ideas, solutions to guarantee sustainable development, and above all, an inclusive development where no one is left behind. That's why, as we always say, social economy is for everyone and by everyone. So it's important to have your participation. Once again, welcome to GSEF 2021 on behalf of the Mexico City government and the Mexican federal government here represented by the Ministry of Social Development and Economy and the local organizing committee, which has been in close contact with the GSEF secretariat. Next, we will open with a video before the beginning of the plenary session. El mundo nos da lecciones de cómo la cooperación, la ayuda mutua y la solidaridad son elementos clave que permiten la existencia y evolución de numerosas especies, incluyendo la humana. La economía social y solidaria incorpora estos principios y valores en sus prácticas que tienen por objeto el bienestar colectivo. Si bien, desde tiempo atrás en distintas regiones del planeta, la economía social y solidaria ha mostrado sus ventajas y potencialidad con políticas locales orientadas a la promoción de economías transformadoras, aún se necesita promover, consolidar y escalar sus acciones, iniciativas y programas de la mano de la sociedad civil. Hay camino por recorrer para aumentar su presencia en la economía mundial y generar un cambio de paradigma. Bienvenidos a iniciativas públicas y civiles para consolidar la economía social y solidaria. Convergencias entre actores y sectores. As you can see, we have officially started this panel. It's an honor to have you with us on this virtual forum together with a wonderful moderator who we are very lucky to have with us. The moderator is Simel Esim, who's a program manager and technical specialist of the International Labor Organization based in Switzerland, as you all know. She has a wonderful experience. She's an economist just like me. She has a PhD from the American University of Washington, DC and a master's degree in social economy, as well as a bachelor's degree from the Middle East, the University of John Hopkins. She also studied political science. She is head of programs in the Department for Businesses in the International Labor Organization. And before that, she has had a long experience working on gender mainstreaming in the regional office of the Arab states, where she headed a program on gender equality in the transition from an informal economy to formal economy and decent work for domestic workers. She has also worked as an economist for the International research center on women's studies and the world bank she has published countless papers and she is with us wholeheartedly behind social and solidarity economies so welcome simel to our global virtual forum she's here to contribute to our discussion and at the very end, we will share a video, which is actually a call for everyone. More on this later. So, Simel, the floor is now yours. Welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, greetings from the International Labor Organization's Cooperative Unit in Geneva. Many thanks, Berenice, for uh, the generous introductions. Uh, so for this plenary on civil and public initiatives to consolidate social and solidarity economy, we are looking at convergences among actors and sectors. Strengthening the social and solidarity economy model requires these uh, joint actions and multi-stakeholder and multi-level networking. 
and uh, building synergies and between the actors of the social and solidarity economy has in fact been a key principle uh, of this movement of uh, its uh, institutions. The plenary will share experiences of government, civil society organizations in implementing local initiatives based on citizen demand and knowledge of the realities uh, on the ground uh, from the territories by forming alliances. And this is especially important in the, this time when we are uh, seeing the crisis over COVID, um, making people even more aware of the consequences of the profit maximizing model based on excessive accumulation at the expense of the environment and the people. And although for some time now, social and solidarity economy advantages are well known, the potential, uh, it's still uh, necessary to promote, consolidate and scale up actions, initiatives and uh, public social programs that further strengthen it. So what are the objectives of the session to reflect on the actors and sectors that promote intersectional initiatives, policies and strategies to design and implement environments suitable for the development of social and solidarity economy, multi-stakeholder convergences and ecosystems that promote good living, well-being, uh, understood beyond capital, but from people, from the collective, and from the solidarity perspective. And our, we have a great lineup of speakers to present and uh, their actions, uh, strategies that have made it possible to create uh, environments for the development of social and solidarity economy. So without uh, further ado, I would like to introduce uh, our speakers, our esteemed lineup of Keep speakers. I will introduce them in the order that I would like to, we would like to ask them to speak. We will start with Reverend Kyung Yong Song. Uh, he has played a key role in National Basic Living Security Act, which was a major leap in the social welfare system in Korea. He has and his colleagues established several social cooperatives and self-sufficiency enterprises in Korea. So he's considered to be one of the early pioneers uh, of social economy in Korea. And um, he has advised governments, multilateral organizations. He's now the president of Seoul Social Economy Network, which is a network of networks uh, of social economy organizations in Korea. And he's also the chairperson of uh, Sharing and Future. Uh, welcome, Reverend Song. Uh, we are very happy to have you with us. Uh, next, we have Pauline Etha. She is the national coordinator of the NGO Partnerships France. She's also the general director of Partnership France Africa for co-development. Uh, she's a correspondent of the SSC International uh, for Africa. And she worked at the Ministry of Social Economy in Cameroon, in which she contributed to making a law that uh, on social economy that was adopted earlier this year. Congratulations and welcome, uh, Pauline. It's great to have you with us. Our third speaker will be Bernarda Sarue Pereira. She has a degree in sociology from the Universidad Mayor de San Simón and a postgraduate degree uh, from the uh, UNAM uh, and University of Havana in Cuba. She has uh, more than 30 years of experience working on many issues, including natural resources, territorial management, uh, indigenous and native populations, peasant women from the Bolivian East and Chago regions, and the political rights of women and municipal governments. She has consulted with many or international organizations working on projects on uh, literacy, sexual health and education with a specific emphasis on gender issues. She's currently the executive director of the Association of Councillors uh, and Mayors of Bolivia, ACABOL, and she works and promotes actions coordinated with state institutions, international organizations, and civil society for political and economic empowerment of women to close inequality uh, gaps and to incorporate gender in development planning. 
Our fourth speaker is Nancy Niemtem, known internationally as an expert in the field of social and solidarity economy, social finance, and local development. She was a founder and CEO of Chantier de l'Economie Sociale, an organization devoted, uh, devoted to the promotion and development of social economy in Quebec. And um, she also uh, led Rezo, uh, Southwest Montreal Community Economic Development Corporation. She's a co-founder and former president of RISC, uh, Quebec Social, so Social Investment Network, and Chantier de l'Economie Trust and TS, a knowledge transfer center in social innovation. She continues her engagement through collaboration with multiple organizations in the social economy movement. Welcome, Nancy. It's great to have you with us. And last but not speak, least is another uh, esteemed speaker who wears many hats. Uh, uh, it's Juan Antonio Pedreño, who's currently the president of Social Economy Europe uh, and also of uh, CEPES, the Spanish Business Confederation of the Social Economy, and the Union of Cooperatives of the Region of Murcia, where I had the pleasure of visiting uh, and meeting him and his colleagues, and the Union of Educational Cooperatives of the Region of Murcia. He chairs the SMED Network, the Euro-Mediterranean Social Economy uh, network and is a counselor of the Economic and Social Council of Spain and other national and uh, regional institutions. Welcome Juan Antonio, it's great to have you with us. So we will have three rounds in this uh, session. In the first round we will have two questions that we pose to our speakers in the order I have introduced them, and they will have each five minutes to answer these questions. Uh, and then we will have a second round, again, five minutes uh, per speaker with uh, a question uh, posed to them. And uh, then we will have a brief interlude uh, after the second round, and then uh, go into a third round with one question for three minute answers from each of the speakers. And uh, we will, of course, be following what's going on in chat, your comments, thoughts, suggestions, and so will our speakers. So we will be engaging with you from there as well. Without further ado, I would like to start off the questions uh, with the, uh, for the first round uh, for five minutes uh, per speaker. Uh, the first question is how to effectively collaborate between actors and sectors to promote the social and solidarity economy. And the second question uh, with two parts is, what actions or strategies did you implement in order to consolidate an alliance with various actors? And what strategies uh, does your organization specifically propose? The floor is yours and we start with Reverend Song. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hi everyone, uh, very nice to see you again and congratulations to survive in COVID-19 crisis. I'm Reverend Kyung Yong Song, President of the Korea Social Value and Solidarity Foundation. As a President of the Foundation and also as a former co-chairperson of GSEF, I'm very much honored and excited to take part in GSEF 2020 virtual forum. I hope the forum will provide invaluable opportunities for us to rethink the way we operate our economic and social system to better accommodate those who are suffering from the aftermath of the pandemic. I believe the social economy can inspire us to rebuild our society towards a more inclusive and sustainable way and to leverage its full potential Indeed, we need effective cooperation across different sectors and with various actors, as the social economy can only be strengthened when it is based on solidarity among voluntary civic movements, institutional and legal support from the government. 
and realization of these efforts in the actual market by harmonizing and adapting in the private sector. The Korea Social Variance Solidarity Foundation, which I have been serving as a president since 2019, established as a first wholesale social finance institution in Korea. And it is exemplary of an effective partnership between civil society, public, labor union, and private sector in promoting the social economy. In Korea, as of 2020, there are over 25,000 social economy enterprises employing 260,000 of which 60% of our employees are a social disadvantaged and vulnerable group. The number of social economy enterprises have been increasing rapidly for the past 10 years and it has become one of the main policy objectives of the government to promote diversity and dynamism of social economy sectors. However, Despite the increase in quantity, we are lacking stable financial supply for social economy enterprises to be sustainable and increase their scales. To solve the problem, the government worked together with the experts and civil society representatives by forming Social Finance Promotion Committee, and they drafted a promotion plan of promoting social finance ecosystem the outcome was the government's announcement of 2018 Social Finance Promotion Plan, which includes a creation of a wholesale social finance fund. The committee opted for the wholesale model as they believed that it is a more appropriate model to create ecosystem as its very structure requires to foster in intermediaries in different regions as real finance. And to stick to the core value of the social economy, the government decided that SVS fund be led by civil society and government indirectly support the initiative by providing legal support and incentives for inducing private sector's participation. The committee agreed that the overall size of the fund shall be 248 million US dollars to be mobilized for the next five years. The first half of the fund is supposed to be mobilized by the private sector, such as commercial banks and social economy organizations first, and the rest shall be the government's matching fund. Primarily, the fund was designed the, to support social impact project, including SIVs, renewable energy, employment, and urban regeneration to provide patient capital long-term low interest rate loans to social economy enterprise via various intermediaries in different regions of Korea. Thirdly, to foster social finance intermediaries through capacity building programs. As of the end of 2020, SVS had committed 1.4 million, 14 million US dollars as investments and loan contract intended to foster the social economy and financial ecosystem. We are trying to expand our scope and depth of activities even further by strengthening cooperation between public private and civil sector, including labor union. From the story of the Korea Social Value and Solidarity Foundation, I'd like to point out that firstly, for the promotion of social economy and enhancing its sustainability, the role of social finance is crucial and for the success of establishing a social finance ecosystem to meet the end. Indeed, we need strong collaboration and participation across the sectors and supports from all actors. It's important for all of us to work 
at a municipal level because we believe that municipalities territorially are essential in order to overcome inequality gaps. This is extremely important when it comes to social and solidarity economy. There are processes of articulation where all social organizations, women especially, can continue to develop. At this level, we have identified that there are spaces where many different elements come into play. Many social economy projects have been implemented. Our main principle is solidarity. First of all, solidarity between all actors, respecting the particularities, territorial and identity-wise, of everyone. So what is our proposal? I believe that first we have to work, and we do so permanently every year, with women, with our mayors and representatives, working on participatory planning processes. What does this mean? There is an important characteristic of these types of processes. They are generated locally, at the heart of the communities, neighborhoods, for them to determine their own needs. The second stage is mapping the needs that they themselves have identified, specifically the needs of women who have been our priority. Why do we focus on women? Because we want to close the gender inequality gap. And in rural, urban, and indigenous communities, we have identified that the needs of women are different and the actions of social economy can be different as well. So the first step is identifying the needs. And then we have worked on identifying regulations and public policies that could help close the inequality gaps, help promote participation of all stakeholders. And to us, it's particularly important to highlight that we want to generate more income for women and their families. We have seen that at the municipalities where we work locally, we have to identify public policies in place and regulations in place, but at the same time, these regulations and policies have to have the budget to create indicators and monitor progress. We identified, for example, a very important element when it comes to the potential of social economy, which is that if we work and we have seen this in many projects that we've identified, we can help women and their families to prevent violence. And we can do so by generating income because that helps families have more equality and the power asymmetries are less significant in households. So we also look at the environment and the ecosystem the sustainability of any actions undertaken when a project is introduced, especially now and the during the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bernardo. We now have Pauline, Eva, uh, ready to join us. Uh, Pauline, the floor is yours. Okay, merci, Simel. Vous Thank maintenant? you very much, Simel. Can you all hear me? Yes, we hear you perfectly well. Okay. So then, I believe there was a mistake when I was introduced, which actually says a lot. I don't work for the ministry, I actually work for an NGO. But we work together with the ministry. We have started mobilizing at a local level. And right now we are working with the Minister of Social Economy in Cameroon. 
we have worked together with the community to help them restructure and create local networks of social and solidarity economy. This local network can then group together all the cooperatives and organizations based on social economy. Through this network, we created a framework that can serve to accompany these different organizations. That has made us stronger to approach the ministry and other sectors to talk to the local governments to guarantee that there is a real convergence among actors that can allow for social and solidarity economy to develop. Therefore, nowadays, we have managed to have a law passed to promote social and solidarity economy in Cameroon. Once this law was voted and adopted, the first decree for application of this law was the institutionalization of social and solidarity economy. This law was approved in January 2020, and the text of the law recognized social and solidarity economy as a means for development. Convergence was also recognized as important. Now the local executives at the community level can work collaboratively with the networks in the community, and that can lead to resource generation locally and strengthening the potential of a local territory. So in Cameroon, there's a very dynamic situation for social and solidarity economy. The network of mayors in Cameroon has have also began to back social and solidarity economy actions. And that has also led to better convergence between actors, leading to a very dynamic environment. At the national level, currently there is a fund, a bank for municipalities in Cameroon, we can put it that way. And right now, the fund is meant to support projects that can create initiatives locally for the local communities to create revenue. This very dynamic environment in the past evolved on their own, but now there is a much better articulation. And that has been thanks to the will of all the actors who are participating to promote social and solidarity economy. At a regional level, we see a lot more convergence and at a national level, we see that as well. So what we're trying to build right now is something that goes beyond programs that in the past used to be created, programs such as FECOM, which was the fund or the bank for municipalities, now there is a program for local development that is to be supported by that fund. This is the challenge that we now face, creating new executives in the community to adopt these actions and accompany the local community so that the population can live much better locally in their own territories. This will prevent displacement of young people, the 
displacement because what's necessary is for economic activities locally to be available for them. Once this is consolidated and there's dyna dyna dynamism locally, that can only be done with government support and convergence. This can help to create cooperatives. Cooperatives to train people in terms of social and solidarity economy. And these types of trainings are being taken to every region so that locally these types of projects can be promoted even those that were born at a municipal level. So that's the challenge for us in the future, to continue promoting that. Nimtam from Canada, if you could uh, kindly uh, address the question. Uh, Nancy, thank you. I will be speaking in French. And I'd like to start by saying that it's a pleasure to be talking about this topic. I could actually talk about it for hours, but I will just explain that I've been working in Quebec for over 30 years in social and solidarity economy. The heart of our, at the heart of our movement is precisely the partnership between businesses, communities, and other actors. This has been the engine for social and solidarity economy in Quebec. Quebec is a French-speaking country. It's a small country, and we have a culture of social dialogue. I think that is what made social economy easier to be adopted. There is a lot of territorial discussion. And in the 90s, we saw a lot of social mobilization, in particular with and against violence and against poverty. What characterizes our region, especially during that period, was that we managed to work to create an ecosystem and not hierarchies. So we were all working together to create a global development method. How did we do that? We created spaces, forums for negotiation between different actors where different stakeholders could participate. Our organization to this day is recognized as a very significant focal point by the government of Quebec and other actors of social economy. It is a network of networks and it groups together businesses from many sectors as well as mutuals and cooperatives. We have social movements, labor, unions, cultural democracy groups, women's groups participate, rural territories and urban territories are all represented, researchers are part of our networks. The First Nations of Quebec, the Assembly of First Nations of Quebec, and they are all represented in our network. These partnerships exist at a regional level in every region, there are many sectors that are also represented. Social banking has been an important part of our organization, partnerships with researchers. The whole ecosystem of social and solidarity economy is based on bridges and partnerships, all trying to transform our development model. And that's where social and solidarity economy comes in when we talk about long-term development. 
the strategy that we have always used has been to try to focus on solutions. There are many people who know the territory, who know what's happening locally, and that allows us to develop innovative strategies to overcome challenges, social challenges. And we can talk about the pandemic now to give a good example of how we have worked. There have been many things happening, including recycling, uh, children's education, access to digital tools. All of these different sectors require solutions that have been proposed by social and solidarity economy groups. And an example was for ex in 2009 in Montreal, where instead of trying to create a policy, a partnership was established with the city government with the goal of promoting social and solidarity economy, understanding that it can help. We need to help the city government and the city government has to help us. So it's a partnership, it's about mutual collaboration. A law was enacted in 2013 that created networks of municipal governments and together with social economy groups and the government. We have done this work throughout the years. Sorry to have to cut you short on this, but uh, we move on to Juan Antonio Pedreño from uh, Spain uh, and Social Economy Europe. Juan Antonio, the floor is yours. Antonio de Economía Social Europa. Juan Antonio, le paso el piso, por favor. Thank you, thank you very much from Spain. It has been a pleasure to be together with so many friends here from Social in Solidarity Economy, different families coming together here in this table. And I think it is a very opportune table. It's a very timely time to do this. And first of all, it's important to transfer value to society and the principles of social economy. How do we make this visible to promote a convergence between many different actors? Berenice was talking and I remembered something that an ILO representative said in Italy a few months ago. He was saying that we still need visibility because we have been used to um, to the principles of social economy. And so it's like a priest and a church. They are, pre they are preaching to those who are already convinced. So we need to transfer this to the public, to the, the, the society. We need to transmit what the principles and values of this um, social uh, economy are. When I looked at the question, first and foremost, it said collaborating, collaborating to doing, which is working jointly with other people, working towards a common goal. And that common goal needs to be created in order to achieve all of our goals. So this is a very defining scenario because I am a president of regional organizations like the one in Europe. And so I can see in this scenario how social economy can be promoted in different stages and in different areas. And the way to promote it is different. So I'm talking about this region, as was said before, a region in which it need, a region for which we need more time to discuss. But of course, it's a region that became the first Spanish region for the creation of social economy uh, companies, cooperatives, and it's a very small city where it has uh, 500 million people. And since the beginning, we made a connection to the educational world. The educational world is key. How do we explain to children uh, the values and the principles of this new company model, this new model 
that prioritizes the value of people and the value of inclusion, equality. When this is explained to children and when you tell them that they need to create cooperation at school, and when those children go out of school, when they graduate, they have been hearing this for many years. They are very well acquainted with the values and the principles if it becomes a part of their education. So we are sharing ideas and goals. And when we share ideas and goals, then automatically the result will be the one that we wished for at the, at the very beginning. So with Organizations for Social Economy in our territory, we have provided help so that all of those values and principles learned at school, and well, maybe I need to say here that almost 40,000 children are now participating in um, school cooperatives in the region. So uh, 40,000 40, children are learning values and principles of cooperation at school at this very moment. So this allows for organizations for social economy to help them be a part of the labor market under models that are already cooperative as well. So this is the first stage. This is the local stage and the regional stage. And there's a second stage for collaboration that has also been very interesting in this case. And in this case, how is it that with the state we can create a Spanish strategy for a social economy? This is a Spanish strategy that is made up of more than 700 different measures and allows us to develop these models in all the regions. And then there's a third and fourth stage and we have had to talk to the European Union and the European Parliament about the meaning of social economy. And that helps us be aware that today the Commission is working toward their, their, towards their goals to 2021. And today in the European Commission document uh, in 2021, there will be an action plan in Europe that favors social economy. So I think it's very important to transfer that knowledge to all of the sectors, commissions, administrations, institutions, talk to them about what the social economy means, who we are, what our values are, and how we can provide a solution for the future based on the current context that we have right now. So I would really love to have more time to talk about all this, but this is just a general overview and that is what I would like to share. Gracias. From uh, Asia, Africa, Latin America, and Europe, of how these uh, convergences among actors and sectors can work in the social economy. We heard on how may, uh, uh, there, there might be a dynamic uh, econo a social economy in Korea from Reverend Song, but social finance is lagging. And what has been some of the uh, recent steps uh, from the formation of a, a social uh, finance committee, a social finance plan that established a fund and uh, how this fund is now mobilizing uh, resources through health private sector, health uh, government to uh, and uh, emphasizing public private partnerships uh, in, in social economy actors, uh, including unions. We have heard uh, from uh, Bernarda on the importance of the uh, municipal local level for and, and the local government for advancing social and solidarity economy and how uh, this uh, uh, principle of solidarity across different communities is manifested in participatory public policy uh, planning with a specific attention to disadvantaged uh, communities. And they, uh, the importance of uh, developing norms, uh, identifying norms on issues such as uh, gender-based violence and, uh, and protection of the environment. Uh, Pauline has uh, talked about uh, the uh, development of the social economy policy. She coming from uh, the NGO side and collaborating min the, with the ministry, how this uh, development of this policy brought in cooperatives and other social economy organizations uh, 
to the development, co-creation of this policy and uh, the importance of this convergence uh, of the actors at the territorial, local, national level is now being uh, demonstrated, is being further articulated in the first degree for the implementation uh, of this uh, policy, its institutionalization. Uh, that uh, clarifies the role of the multitude of social economy actors and also the role of, again, financing comes here to turn these uh, initiatives to actual uh, projects on the ground in the local uh, level. Uh, Nancy has uh, shared with us how the uh, alliance between local actors, social economy actors uh, is based on a strong culture of collaboration in Quebec and how uh, the uh, ecosystem, the creation of an ecosystem for social economy included uh, different uh, actors from women movement, indigenous movement, uh, the ecological movements who were a part of this uh, partnership at the regional and sectoral levels. And she emphasized, as, as so did Juan Antonio, the importance of these strategies to be uh, adapted based on the unique context of the regions of the sectors and uh, the, the realities there. So, and she also gave us some examples. Juan Antonio has uh, kindly shared with us the importance of promoting and advancing the values and principles of a social and solidarity economy to the wider public. And uh, not just speaking uh, among the converted uh, as if uh, we might uh, be in a, in a church, but uh, how to get it uh, to, to the mainstream uh, thinking. And one of the solutions he has clearly uh, elaborated on is that of education. Uh, getting the, these values and principles of cooperation, cooperativism, mutualism into the schools, in starting from elementary schools for young uh, children, girls and boys uh, to learn uh, to, uh, about the values and principles at school. And of course, social economy organizations are uh, can be very critical in providing uh, this, uh, in contributing to this education through their concrete on the ground examples. And I would like to say, Juan Antonio, that I was in first grade the uh, president of a cooperative club, which doesn't exist anymore in my country, but at the time it did. I would like to now, uh, before we move to the next uh, round of questions, just uh, salute to the more than 100, 500 people who are with us uh, on Zoom uh, for this uh, plenary session. And we have many, many more on Facebook. Greetings to you all. And uh, just to mention that there is a, the live broadcast is available at www jesseph2021.org uh, and you can if you are sharing this uh, social on social media this uh, plenary please use the hashtag uh, jesseph2021 um, and we are now moving to the second round we will have again five minutes per speaker and this time it's one question you have already started some of you talking about this but the question is in times of crisis how do we advance and face challenges through collaboration and cooperation and we will go with the same order uh, reverend song the floor is yours thank you Particularly, Particularly under, under the, the impacts, impacts of COVID-19, where the most vulnerable people in our society are affected most. We need strong solidarity among actors more than ever. And the role of social economy is to guide different sectors and actors in our society to embed social value as their intrinsic mission to purse in the every economic and social activity. In Korea, it is reported that about 40%, 40% decrease in re revenues in four major sectors of the social economy due to the COVID-19 and more than 
77.9% of socio-economy enterprises are urgently needing finance to cover their labor expense. In addition to our existing portfolios, with 24 partner organizations, we mobilized all together crisis response fund to support social economy enterprises who are unable to access government emergency loans and who cannot wait for receiving the government loans as there was a huge bottleneck in processing loan schemes due to surge in the number of enterprises applied for the loan in a very short period. We supported 27 social economy enterprises, one year duration, 1.5 interest rate, and renewable for one more year. For the enterprises who dropped their profits by 50%, 50% compared to the previous three months. Also with the crowdfunding platform, we launched a project to make advance payment for social economy enterprises, services, and products by attracting participation from citizens. Besides, we are encouraging directors and board members of major public institutions' donation, usually through their voluntary pay cut of salary 30% to the, to the fund. In times of crisis, the social economy can play a vital role as many of social economy enterprises are deeply rooted in their community. They can act quickly for the most vulnerable groups in their community. And as our case demonstrate, to take it even more effective, strong support and participation across the public and private sectors are crucial. We need solidarity and joint actions more than ever before. But after we realized that all of these activities could also provide jobs for smaller enterprises in the community. And I think that many companies had been losing income. So women's cooperative enterprises started uh, creating face masks and then they were provided to NGOs, to the state, to the municipalities and even at the national level and international level through uh, structures like the IMS. We saw that there was a lot of support for this initiative and this was uh, focused towards promoting peace. And now these activities are being promoted through GCEF. We could also show that there was a, a very solid movement uh, in which we could rely further along the line. And our main concern is that there were uh, great changes in grassroots organizations and small enterprises small-scale enterprises mainly. And today, the main question is, how are we going to keep this flame uh, alive? So I need conversions of all of these forces. The government has understood that there are people at the grassroots level that could do real work to support the government itself to continue the production of these essential products. These objects that they are creating could be very useful for the public. So there's soap production, for instance, this um, disinfectant gel for hands. Young people are always participating in all of these dynamic activities. So we saw that there were different forces that could be useful at different levels, from the most local one to the global level. So we carried out many different initiatives to fight against COVID and to increase prevention and protection. 
And we even had international initiatives. We had communication with other African countries, like young people in Cameroon were in close contact for, with, Cong Cong with Congolese people who were also giving follow-up to the community and trying to address the same problems, same issues. Therefore, these strategies need to be learned from. I think that all of the sectors of life, including our territories, our villages, our cities, they all need to come together and they need to be considered by all of the stakeholders, both at the local level, as in the communities themselves, and at the local level by um, municipality, governments, and it is only through that convergence that we are going to achieve a long-lasting effect. And I believe that right now we are having dialogues with the social economy ministry to, to plan for the post-COVID era. We are also thinking about international action. I think that is okay to provide face masks during COVID. But of course, later on, we need to keep consolidating all of those structures. Bernarda, could we ask uh, the same question uh, to you and uh, your answer, please? Muchísimas gracias. Bueno. Thank you very much. Well, I think one of the big lessons from the pandemic, at least for us in Bolivia, who have gone through very difficult times during uh, the governmental transition and, and the pandemic at the same time, it has not been very easy. However, what is very important about all of this and the lessons learned are that the pandemic has shown us that everything that was invisible is now visible. So that is a very important topic. Well, social relationships always existed, but now there is manifestation. So there is, uh, there are different ways in which violence is being manifested and the patriarchy has also become more evident. So social structures need to be reconsidered in many societies, mainly in Bolivia, in this case, um, despite of all the developments in human human rights that have taken place. <clears throat> this is important because we have realized that there are organizations of um, producers, um, eco-feminists, for instance, there are many movements, especially women's movements, that are still very related to this um, uh, urban and rural area conflict. Uh, during the pandemic, this has become very evident. So these groups have had initiatives where people, the community can have access to products that are made in rural areas. And so we have kind of interrupted supermarket panic shopping, for instance, in big malls and big uh, big shopping centers. So I think that in many municipalities, the conditions have been met so that all of the small enterprises from very, very simple services to the sale of products are now possible. And so people are considering this interculturality aspect of food itself. So Ever since the pandemic started, we have been trying to overcome all of these obstacles, all of these challenges. But we have learned that when we work with small enterprises and when we promote them, we promote their parallel development, we can achieve food sovereignty, which is a big issue. So solidarity economy should prioritize this in the short term. And at the local level, there should be articulation with the national government. So in the national government, the central state should be looking towards those options and analyzing what's happening in those small territories where uh, the invisible is now visible, where those small actions, those small enterprises from the local level and national level we can also have certain sustainability for that, for those actions, 
so that there is co-responsibility for this type of economy because we have realized during this time that women have stopped working and they have become in one way or another guardians stewards of the children and they have stopped working because they have to take care of their children and homeschool them as well so if we don't really pay attention to that co-responsibility if we don't take care of the elderly for instance and we don't take all these elements into consideration we will not be able to develop short-term actions for the pandemic so i think that is very important another topic that I think in our case in Bolivia and many countries in South, South America have become evident is the technological gap that exists. And this is very important because we need to address immediate issues in that regard. In our case, there is a certain amount of illiterate uh, people or people who are technological, that there's a lot of technological illiteracy. We need to work with technological literacy and promote that so that um, we can create virtual platforms in which the social and solidarity economy is promoted as well. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, Juan Antonio? Your answer on the crisis, uh, how do we advance and face challenges through collaboration and cooperation? What we learned from the COVID crisis? Well, thank you. I believe that the social economy during the pandemic has uh, made evident that, well, of course, we, all still, we are still undergoing this crisis and in Spain, uh, this has become a real issue now again, uh, but it's an economic and a social issue. That's the first, that's, that's the first line of action. There have been many initiatives to mitigate the effects of the pandemic. And it has also emphasized that social economy enterprises are essential in essential sectors, vital sectors for uh, for the economy, like agriculture with cooperatives for agriculture, f fishing as well, uh, fisheries, transport, healthcare, cleaning, water distribution, all of the social enterprises in those sectors have gained much importance and they have to, to spearhead this, this process. And there has also, there has also been an increase in the in the level of solidarity and connection between all of these sectors, as Pauline was saying before. And um, it has made clear that isolation is not the answer. So uh, throughout these months, I think that we have come to a different time. I think that the current situation gives us what has often been mentioned that during crises, we also find many opportunities. So at this point, I believe that we have the opportunity to gain momentum to make bold decisions about how to build a sustainable and inclusive world. This COVID-19 crisis invites us to rethink our goals efficiently and with resilience. The word resilience has become so important for social economy cooperatives, and they have been showing us again and again that they are the most resilient companies in the market because if there is something cooperatives do in social economy is to make entrepreneurial projects a life project for many people. So uh, this crisis allows us to improve people's lives through those projects because what social economy does is reinforce the transition towards more resilient social societies through solidarity, cooperation, and social impact. I think it is possible to inspire all the other companies to work in a different way. Let's not forget that social economy humanizes the economy itself. It humanizes the economy because humans are at the center of the projects. So we also need to be responsible and we need to operate in a simple way. We are achieving economic goals, social goals. We have a collective social innovation. 
uh, we are writing a new story and forging this new path based on values and principles for a transition towards inclusive systems, uh, sustainable systems, and re resilient systems. But we need to make sure that all of this is visible in our society. Social economy needs to help rebuild a better world. So I believe that in order to do that, we need to participate in the forums where public policies are created. We need to participate in the forum where our companies are, are being resilient, economically resilient. And uh, we also have social responsibility and companies that are betting on a more sustainable and more inclusive economy. We want those enterprises to have the space that they deserve. In Spain, we have made it possible for a social economy to rebuild the country. They are now able to participate in the corporation funds that the European Commission has created for the Spanish government, and they have uh, significant participation. They also created a pact for the European social economy, and how are we working in that regard? We are highly committed so that people in every single place in Spain do not abandon their territory. They need to remain in their territory. And um, so what we're doing definitely is to make it possible for Spain and Europe to have this ecosystem as uh, Nancy was mentioning as well in her previous intervention, it is necessary for that ecosystem to exist both in Spain and in Europe as well. We need to have countries, uh, companies and organizations based on social economy, which will help us be more resilient and have a better future in general so that we can rebuild a better future. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Antonio. The floor is yours now with the same question on what we've learned from COVID on collaboration and cooperation. Well, it's clear that crises over the last century uh, were important. They, these crises in the last century were very important to build social economy. The challenge right now is not only to develop social economies through the pandemic, but also to make everything that we are doing now the new normal way to do things. So I think that is the very, uh, that is the most important thing that we have to do. The crisis is important at many different levels. I think that the first level would be the political and ideological level. Because there are things that the social and solidarity economy have integrated to the discourse uh, for a very long time. And now it has become the priority to get out of this pandemic. So the social economy is a top priority it is even more important than economics itself because it's social economy is closely related to people's health. We have been saying that social economy is related to people, to health, to nature for a very long time. So it is clear that the pandemic helped us in this way. We are not going to escape this pandemic without cooperation and mobilization from people. And so this is also part of our narrative, our, our fundamental narrative the importance of the economy, including health care, including caring for others, and all of these small enterprises. Now we see how essential they are to the development of society. So buying local products, supporting local businesses, particularly when it comes to food production, that has become increasingly clear right now. Uh, under this new situation. And we see the importance of social solidarity economy in this way during the pandemic. In Quebec, as was mentioned before, of course, we were able to mobilize very quickly to show in what way the social economy can respond to our, our problems. We have uh, a, co a cooperative made up of women who also organized with other women in Quebec and 
there were hundreds of women creating face masks, masks in just a few days. And there was uh, help with food. People uh, for social finances movements, they mobilized in order to keep companies alive during this stage. And so we have seen how companies and social economy organizations can be sensitive to respond to the needs and to make flexible decisions and act very quickly. And this just shows uh, that this is a new trend. A uh, big challenge that we're trying to address right now is what is going to happen in, in the future. So the social economy needs to meet our needs, but also fulfill our aspirations, fulfill young people's aspirations and the community's um, dreams, right? So we need to build something better during uh, an ecological and social transition. And my organization is a part of an alliance for environmental uh, organizations. And there are many other stakeholders working with us. We work together to reactivate the economy, starting from a new development model. So there are a few sectors that have shown their importance to us right now. So the grassroots sectors, um, everything that has to do with um, protecting the habitat or culture, food sovereignty, food security, so we are all working together right now to identify what we can do to integrate all of these proposals. And we are working closely with the municip municipalities governments because it is there at the local level where we can create great alliances and forge great partnerships for the future. There are many cities in Quebec that are now being guided through that ideology. So we believe that the crisis really provides many opportunities and we need to be very creative to come out of this crisis as strong as ever. So we got from our speakers. Yes, social economy organizations needed financing for wages of workers. And yes, they had to apply for short-term loans uh, but also they took measures, they were adaptable and flexible, and they took measures like voluntary cuts and pay and utilized multiple strategies. In Cameroon, COVID has provided an opportunity to demonstrate how social economy quickly mobilized and converged around provision of key issues like sub, uh, protective equipment or food uh, assistance, women producing masks, youth distributing gels, and the dynamism of the organizations and the flame that was lit uh, needs to be sustained. This is a, a strong message coming from this round of uh, answers that, uh, yes, governments are seeing, uh, lo especially local governments are seeing the value of the social economy institutions in uh, uh, responding to the needs of the communities, especially those most vulnerable, but how to keep that recognition going beyond the immediate, beyond the emergency phase, but to sustain it for more medium uh, to long term, which of course can also be further elaborated in our round three of answers. And there are lessons learned, of course, from this crisis. All that was invisible, as Bernardo was saying, from the experience in Bolivia became visible. Gender-based violence and the increase of it, especially uh, during periods of confinement. The increase in care responsibilities that fall on women and households, where the households became not only kindergartens, but uh, also uh, schools. And, um, the importance of purchasing food by local government uh, locally uh, became obvious. The national government having uh, being uh, being aware, made aware of these in the invisibles becoming visible uh, during the 
uh, pandemic and at the local level became essential. And the technology divide between uh, rural and urban and between uh, remote communi communities and uh, more urban centers uh, became important and this, you know, uh, closing this divide. Um, Juan Antonio, when he talked about Spain and Europe, reflected on essential frontline workers and their social economy organizations from transport to fishery to consumer and uh, health uh, and uh, waste management and social care, how they showed that there is a different model of doing a business is possible. They showed this during the crisis with uh, how they care uh, for their communities and mobilize around uh, their communities, uh, the moral, the ethical, the caring economy, that, uh, that a different way of do doing business is possible. Um, and this is something that they showed to the governments and showed to other pri to, uh, private enterprises uh, that um, a shift in the in the discourse, a shift in the paradigm is possible and is needed. Um, Nancy has also mentioned how the crisis has showed the value of social economy a new normal, which could be a better normal with a larger role for social economy, where values and well-being of people and planet can be prioritized. Uh, uh, against uh, this uh, primacy of profit maximization uh, motif uh, that uh, has uh, dominated the, the discourse in the past few decades. And the crisis showed the flexibility of social economy organizations and the, and the transition in the mindset, a paradigm shift, how that is possible. So uh, on that, I think, uh, hopeful uh, note, uh, I would like to uh, go to round three. In this case, I know we promised you three minutes, uh, our speakers, but uh, uh, because we are uh, running a little bit behind time, uh, we are going to ask you if you can do it in two minutes instead. And uh, the, our question for round three is, how to transform the present and build a better future from the perspective of uh, social and solidarity economy. So continuing on the points you raised uh, around the COVID response, uh, but moving it a little future forward. So we will start with a message from a Reverend Song of Korea Peace. I'd like to conclude that we are in the center of the great transformation of reshaping our society towards more inclusive and sustainable. My pick of three words are transformation, inclusiveness, and sustainability. Stay strong. I'd like to conclude that we are in the center of the great transformation of reshaping our society. Formation, inclusiveness and sustainability. Moving on to you, Pauline. What are some of the messages and thoughts for social economy in moving forward from this crisis? Je crois que c'est apparu tout au long de, de nos interventions. Il Je crois faut... que c'est vu dans toutes les interventions que c'est nécessaire de capitaliser tout ce qui s'est fait pour capitaliser sur tout ce que nous avons fait through la crise. So, first and foremost, it's important to consolidate um, current organizations because this is not only happening in Cameroon, but also in other African countries. We need to build uh, enabling environments for a social and solidarity economy. And then we also need a convergence. In order to make these initiatives sustainable and long lasting. So it's very important to consolidate and support these initiatives, but we also need to better equip 
the women and uh, go beyond the production of face masks and gels. So it's very important to, to keep these practices alive. So there's production of soap, as I mentioned before, which could be done to scale. Um, and so it's very important to to keep those initiatives alive in order to meet society's needs. So it is extremely important to consolidate all of the initiatives that have been developed during the, the pandemic. Okay, go ahead, Bernard. The economy moving forward. Bernardo. Gracias. Well, at this point, I think there are many important issues that have become evident at the local level, municipality level. But I think from uh, a different point of view that we need to uh, eradicate administrative and political barriers that limit social and solidarity economy. So it is now time to create new instruments and new standards where the necessary conditions are created to strengthen solidarity economy. So this means having a new uh, public management law, which is being drafted and proposed. And it means that we need to seriously work on making the invisible visible. And this means that our society needs to prioritize inclusion where women, young people, and families need to be protagonists, and they need to incorporate different elements that will help the local economy, the national economy, and further along the line, the global economy. This on the one hand. And on the other hand, it's very important to um, prevent violence. Prevention of violence is... Um, very important in our region where there is more widespread violence. So uh, it's very important to try to bring down administrative barriers to build capacity at the local level to provide more job opportunities for women and to increase their level of income. So it's not the same to have a job than to have a good income, right? And so the sustainability is also related to to nature and this also needs to be harmonious the process needs to be harmonious for a social and solidarity economy where do we go from well, i think that the first main important aspect is to is to do it on skull, a scale. We need to promote solidarity. And so it's very important to propose different projects and work together to, to achieve this. So the most important thing if we want to move faster and we want to work well, is to support each other and learn from our best practices together. In Quebec, social economy implemented practices from all sectors. And I think that this knowledge transfer is essential in order to overcome any challenges that may arise and to dare do different things. I also believe that we need to work on citizen citizen mobilization. This is a great opportunity to promote education and mobilize civil society. And for that, we need a global vision, creating partnerships with all stakeholders, including the municipalities is extremely important and we need to rely on those alliances. The floor is yours. 
Bueno, pues, muchas gracias nuevamente. Well, thank you very much once again. I am going to borrow a, a quote from eight years ago. We used to celebrate uh, 2012, 2012 as the International Cooperative Day, uh, International Cooperative Year, in which they said that cooperatives um, help build a better future, a better world. And why is that? Well, because they are contributing with values, democracy, different type of government, uh, solidar solidar solidarity, inclusion, equality. And so our society needs to learn from that. Maybe we don't realize that right now, but we are transforming the present. And sometimes it's not perceptible. It seems like it's not the case, but we are also transforming our reality. This event and all of the events that GSEF are organizing, uh, along with other organizations, are helping millions of people convince themselves that there could be a different dynamic. It could There could be a different uh, corporate model. And the economy that we are proposing is different and could um, provide many benefits. The UN, the European Parliament, the European Commission, many countries are prioritizing this. Right now, Spain has a 16 European country committee that have prioritized social economy. So this means that we are changing the present and we are working towards a better future. And for that, we need to work on and set global goals uh, for the greater interest of the public. So in Europe, there are 14 million people, 14 million workers, and more than 200 million partners. We need to be more. And right now, the social economy is the only soulful economy. And this is a soul that is lacking from other business models. We believe that now is a time for social economy, and we need to seize that opportunity. Thank you. It is a moment of great transformation uh, that is for an economic model of inclusiveness and sustainability. We need to capitalize on the heightened recognition of social economy toward consolidating and construction uh, of a, a bigger uh, social economy, make it grow. Um, and this great move, move toward a better understanding of, in a way, a new social contract. And uh, the how do we remove obstacles to the growth of social economy and make, making what was invisible visible. And uh, so um, we, we need to propose the next steps for programs and policies where a social and solidarity economy central to building uh, resilience and strengthening communities. Uh, the mobilization of citizens around the world is in fact uh, very much linked to this, uh, to the social and solidarity economy and we need to further strengthen that. And uh, last but not least, uh, 2012 was the International Year of Cooperatives, and the message there was cooperatives help build a better future, and indeed social economy can help build a better uh, future. Social economy is transforming the present now uh, with a different showing, a different way of doing business, and uh, it can do that uh, for the future. So we are it is big, but it needs to grow more. And on that uh, inspiring, energizing note, uh, we conclude the session. Uh, Berenice, uh, I turn back the floor to thank you, you and thank our speakers for this very energizing, inspiring uh, session. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much, Simeli. Como le dije al equipo, una de nuestras. Uh, thank you so much, as I was saying. Uh, she, Simil, has been one of our star moderators, and we would like everyone to be just like you. So I would just like to quickly tell you what is going on, because in this uh, gl virtual global forum, a few months ago, we made a call because we believe that we need to be more inclusive as well. And as our experts were saying, the social solidarity economy needs to be evident at the local level and on a daily basis. 
So we wanted to contribute to this dialogue by including several different communities in all corners of the world. So we launched this call in three languages, in Spanish, French, and English. And what we were seeking mostly was to include different initiatives, different categories. We opened three categories. For the first one is solidar solidarity initiatives. And as Antonio said a while ago, maybe people don't know what social solidarity economy is, but they do apply its principles. And this is something that has been evident with COVID, where people have been organizing to provide food to others. Neighbors have come together to buy from local businesses and support local businesses. So this is solidarity that can be visible in newer generations that are more aware of environmental issues. And we need to know um, and include those younger generations. The second category was actions for a social solidarity economy. So those who are putting this in pra into practice and the people who live social and solidarity economy. We are going to watch one of the videos that were selected for this week. There will be five videos that you will see in each of the plenary sessions from different countries. And today uh, I would like to quickly introduce this video with Norma Yadira Rosano from FESHAC. So go ahead, Norma, you can introduce your video from Colectivo Empresarios Chihuahuenses. So promoting solidarity economy by Mexican hands from high mountains. Go ahead, Norma Yadira. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to greet you from the north of Mexico, from the state of Chihuahua. And it's wonderful to share this initiative promoted by entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs under the principles of solidarity through this initiative have been promoting sustainable initiatives since 2003, trying to develop the grassroots capacity building has been done specifically with women and their families. We have 70 in place and that has allowed us to strengthen household economies as well as the social fabric and democratic decision making. Today we want to share our intervention models with you including one on social economy. Our video of the Colectivo en Empresarial Chihuahuense promoting social entrepreneurship. So let's look at it and let's see the work that's being done in Mexico. En Fechac, impulsamos la economía social y solidaria a través del acompañamiento a las personas. Para que sean dueñas de su propio destino y tener una economía más justa basada en valores como dar a los demás, buscar el bien común, la solidaridad y subsidiariedad. Somos una empresa social comprometida con nuestra comunidad. 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 La ayuda mutua es un valor que vivimos día a día como colectivo. La ayuda mutua es un valor que vivimos día con día como colectivo. Gracias a FECHAC somos autónomos e independientes. Tenemos una vida buena, nos capacitamos, cooperamos entre nosotros, promovemos la democracia y tenemos compromiso con nuestra comunidad. 